What's up guys, Chandler Henry here. You guys have seen all the work that I've done on my house. We did the home gym, we did the studio, and we've done a lot of other projects, but for anyone doing renovations to a fixer upper, the kitchen is by far the biggest, most expensive, most intimidating project. And on this house, that certainly held true. You saw this before we started. This was a mold and cockroach infested, small closed off mess. I gotta give a special shout out to my cousin Tyler who came down. We demolished the whole thing, took out the walls, took out the old cabinets, saw some horrific stuff underneath the dishwasher. What was funny is that underneath the carpet in the kitchen and five layers of laminate flooring, it was actually particle subfloor, which swells up when it gets wet. Right. I have no idea why you would ever do that. Tony Atta actually helped me use a crowbar to get it up when it was so gross and disgusting. So I thought it'd be helpful to sit down here with Tony and go over what we did to this kitchen space. Because as I mentioned later in this video, I do a lot of DIY and I was able to help Tony with some of the stuff, but really just holding things up. Tony's the master when it comes to kitchens. So I thought it'd be useful for any of you who are looking to do a renovation project like this, if I were to sit down with him and we'd go over the do's and don'ts of kitchen renovation. Now, I wanna put you on camera and have you go over your handiwork here, but as you guys can see, we have a massive kitchen island. Whitney designed everything, so she wanted this black to contrast with the white. Just beautiful cabinets, and Tony's handiwork is everywhere in this. We actually finished it two years ago, and it still looks brand new. So let's go over some of the stuff you did on the kitchen. Okay, so from a small kitchen that was here, walls that were removed, we came up with a kitchen that is now 12 feet wide and 19 and a half feet long. Probably one of the largest kitchens that I built. Well, Whitney explained to me that she likes a big kitchen, a lot of counter space. So her and I sat and with her ideas along with mine, we designed this beautiful kitchen for her. So to make the room spacious, we designed floor to ceiling cabinets, glass doors to display some of the nice china. We built a beautiful big island, uh, which we painted black with gold trim and also gold trim on all the doors. All these doors are self-closing, self-closing drawers. We got hidden cabinets on the other side of the island, the beautiful waterfall. To finish off the end of the kitchen, we designed two big giant pantries. Uh, also have uh, pullouts in there to store food, the dog food. It's, it's beautiful design with pull out drawers, everything beautiful. It's large, doesn't use up a lot of space to utilize all your food, dog food and everything. Also, one of the best features is we installed a reverse osmosis for the water. Uh, so you could drink the city water, it cleanses it and it's actually some of the best water I've ever drank. So I wanna lead them into why I hired you specifically because they've seen a lot of the renovations I've done on this channel. I did my home gym, I did my studio space downstairs. But when it comes to kitchens, your cabinets and your countertops are very, very, very expensive, like used car expensive. So when you're someone like me who's doing a lot of trial and error, like when I do the floor, if I mess up a piece of flooring, well, I go grab another piece of flooring and just try again until I get it right. But with these cabinets and countertops, no, you gotta do it right the first time. One time, one shot. So I know that we finished this kitchen two years ago, but yes. with how big it is, with how much counter space there is, with how much cabinets, what would someone expect to pay for cabinets and countertops like this today? Oh, today and day cabinets have become super expensive. Uh, probably twice what you paid, if not more. I would say probably in the range of nineteen to twenty-one thousand dollars, easy. For both combined? No, just for cabinets. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So oh. cabinets and countertops, you're probably looking at. Uh, and now countertops have become ridiculously expensive. You're probably looking just without no labor, cabinets and countertops, you're probably looking at over 25 grand. Easy, no doubt. Well, scratch what I said about used car. Yeah, new yeah. Car. Oh yeah, a that's new a new car. car, yeah. That's a new car. I thought of that when you said that, when you used that analogy, I was like, no, that's, no, that's not a used <laughs> Listen, car. Listen, I like to get cars that are 10 to 15,000 used. <laughs> Oof, yeah. 25, but I'm very thankful we were able to get this done when we did because yeah. it turned out great. And another thing I would say, with it being that expensive, I didn't want to make any mistakes, so I had to use a professional. But also, these things are so expensive that unless you are very, very rich, you're going to want to do it one time Correct. and have it last 30, 40 years. Oh, yes. Yeah, if you use good cabinets, no particle board cabinets. None, uh, I don't want to shout out to uh, Home Depot or anything like that. Yeah, you don't want to buy like Home Depot cabinets. You want to buy, uh, yeah. you know, good quality plywood box cabinets, hardwood faces, cabinets with a good, uh, 
good hardware in them, you know, self-closing. Something that's going to last you, you know, old houses today and day. You could go into an old house and the old timers that built them all out of hardwood and plywood, some of those houses are 50, 60 years old, and when they tear them out to put a new kitchen, th that is the original kitchen that's Jeez. been in that house all those years from the craftsmanship. So today, they don't make they, them like they used to. No, they don't. They don't. But if you find good a good company that sells you good plywood cabinets, hardwood faces, you can, you can put a kitchen in that'll last you 30 years, you know, it'll last you the lifetime of how long you want to stay there and raise your children, that's for sure. So one of the coolest things about Tony, guys, is he's done literally everything in the trade space, and he's a master at all of it. This kitchen, it's kind of probably easy work for you in a sense. You know how to frame houses, fix cars, do plumbing, do electrical, fix pools, pretty much everything. Yeah. So when was the first time you did a full kitchen on your own? Early 20s, when I was early 20s. I've been in a cabinet shop since I was 17 years old, or seven years old, excuse me. Uh, uh, my brother and I, who's a year older than me, we used to walk 10 blocks in the Bronx back in the- So that's where the accent comes from, by the way. That's an Alabama accent, we're talking about. <laughs> Dad always said, if a man, another man can do it, you can do it. Comes to mechanic, plumbing, electric, he says he puts on his pants just like you do. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. And I will say, that's been my mindset with doing my house. And I got to say, just watching you do the kitchen, I learned a lot. And in the past, I thought when we bought this house, I'll figure out how to do the kitchen on my own. And I was thinking I was going to do it till I met him. And then when I watched him do it, I was like, I am so, 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 so thankful I didn't go down that road. Because... Honestly, I do think I could have figured it out, but I would have messed up a lot of extra holes in those cabinets. I don't think I would have gotten them all perfectly level. Watching you make sure everything's plumb and level so that, I'll put it like this, your kitchen's gonna last 40 years, mine may have lasted three to four years and looked a lot worse. So once I gutted the whole kitchen and you had your blank canvas as an artist, what are the steps that you take to get to the final product? Well, first you got to find out how level, there's not a level house. Anyone who thinks that they got a perfectly level house, they're uh, fooling themselves. So you, you, first you got to start with a level and got to find out what is the high and the low spot of the house, of the kitchen. And that's where you start from. That's where you make your level from is from the highest spot of the house. Cause you can always wedge up and bring up the cabinets. Right. The other side of it's too high. You can't bring it down unless you start cutting cabinets or carving into the floor. It's not going to happen. So the idea is to get that, first, especially that base cabinets, they must be leveled. If they're not level, your uppers aren't gonna be level. I will level my, my lower cabinets, get them all set, start from corner out, because on the other end I can put filler. And once I got those uh, base cabinets level, I can just use spacers of normally 19 and a half inches so that I can set my upper cabinets, because if my lowers are level, my uppers are gonna be level. I only have to put a level to them. So basically that's the process that you have to start and uh, know where you're going to end, how much filler you're going to put in, you know what I mean? Uh, measurements of yeah. what cabinets are going to fit There's where. No gaps in these. Yeah, no, no, no. Some cabinets, these we took floor to ceiling, so we didn't have the option of putting crown molding on it. Normally if people want to use like a 36 inch cabinet, upper cabinet versus a 42, you know, you could fill it in with risers and crown molding here because the man in the house is four foot nine uh, we had to put in real tall cabinets, you know, so that, uh, because not everybody can reach up there, but yeah. yeah those are stores the very top shelves, yeah. only I can get to them. Yeah, yes, yeah. All right, so after, it's a dishwasher being done. Very quiet dishwasher. Yeah, I didn't hear it running. Yeah, great appliances. Yeah, great appliances well, matter. Well, may as well use that as a segue. I got an LG fridge, LG microwave, a Whirlpool stove, and an LG dishwasher. One thing I'm sure you've experienced, you know, you don't directly install appliances lots of the time. Other people do that. But with all the work that you've done, I'm sure you know kind of what the good appliances and bad appliances are. In my experience, I would say stay away from Samsung. Correct. I got a Samsung microwave. It broke within a year. I woke up one morning and it said SE on it. And I was like, why, why does it say SE? I Googled it. It says the microchip was fried. I'm like, I only use this microwave like once a month. Why could it fry? and uh, the new chip cost $350, the new microwave cost 300 bucks. So I just got an LG microwave. I've heard horrible things about Samsung appliances all across the board. You know, there goes my chance that are being sponsored by Samsung, but my conscience couldn't let me say, get Samsung stuff because <laughs> it always breaks. LG will, cut. LG will give you a call. Yeah, LG, yeah. LG's great. <laughs> LG will give you a call. Yeah. So after you're done with the cabinets, countertops, if I remember right, comes next. Once the cabinets are fully installed, boom, they come with the countertops. Can you talk a little bit about that experience? Yes, the countertops, well, naturally you can't put countertops unless you got cabinets. So once you got all your cabinets down, all your cabinets are level, 
Find yourself a really good countertop guy. I use Jesus out of Miami. He's been doing my countertops for like 15 years. The man is awesome. A lot of people these days are using quartz. They think it's not durable. Quartz is very, very durable. It doesn't stain. If you got a good uh, person who works the material really good and polishes it and seals it very good, be years, 10 years, you won't have to do anything and they're not gonna stain that easy. Uh, countertops are very important and basically the countertops have to be beautiful because the kitchen, once you put in the cabinets, it's like you're looking at this beautiful woman. But when those countertops got in, that's that same woman with some makeup. Without that, you know, you just got a woman. Would makeup make any woman look beautiful? But yeah, to me, countertops are like the makeup of the kitchen. That's, that's the woman with the makeup on, yes. So you've done 2,000 kitchens. If you were building your dream kitchen, what type of cabinets and countertops would you put in it? Because there's a lot of different countertop materials. We went coarse because we thought it was the prettiest. And like you said, it's very durable. But, you know, what would you want after all that you've seen in the kitchen space? What would you prefer in your kitchen? You're looking at it. Really? You're looking at it. I, I, I cook. I also, know, I also wear a hat of a cook. I raised five children. The kitchen was always my space, right? So to me, I got to have a lot of counter space and I like a lot of cabinets because I like a lot of appliances in my kitchen. So yeah, if I was going to, uh, that would be one of my dream kitchens right there. I've, and really? There's a few. I've built a couple of kitchens. I go, wow, that would be mine. Mainly because it has a lot of cabinets, countertops. It's open, it's open, uh, I, I, like I said, I raised five children and my children are always like, dad, cook for me, do this for me. So I cook for my daughters on their birthdays and I like an open kitchen because to me, the family comes together in the kitchen. Yeah. You know, the, you know, you're just starting to raise kids, but you're gonna notice when your kids get bigger, especially the way Whitney cooks, they're gonna be in the kitchen, mom, you know, testing the food, you know, yeah. and, and, uh, and tasting it. So yeah, the kitchen, I would have a kitchen, I, that would be one of my dream kitchens right then. Absolutely no doubt, I'm not just saying that. Lastly, for people watching this, if they're doing a kitchen renovation, what is just something that you wouldn't typically think of? Something when you're helping someone design a kitchen, you're like, ah, you didn't think about this. Like for example, you had us, you made sure that our dishwasher was directly next to the sink and directly next to the pull-out trash can. That they lay out things like that that oh, yeah. make your life a lot easier. Yeah, well, every kitchen's different. You gotta work with the space that you have. Some people, you were blessed to have a large space, even though at, at first this house used to have an eight foot uh, sliding door oh, and we had closed out two feet of it and turned it to a six foot sliding door so we could get that length. Right. You know what I mean? So a lot of times you have to look out for, you know, what if, what is the person gonna use the kitchen for? You know, sometimes I've talked so many people into knocking down walls. I love open kitchens, so that's that's big for me. But yeah, it's it's what's going to function. Like you know, if you if you're washing your dishes, you, your garbage can should be closed because you want to scrape off your food, throw it into the dishwasher. You know, it, it has to function. Right. You know, if you're going to have a kitchen where your garbage can is you know five feet away, people want sometimes in an island. I'd be like, why would you want it there? You got to walk with your dirty food four feet to dump your food, you know, where's yeah. the, you know, half the food is on the floor. So a kitchen has to function. It has to feel right when you're working in it, you know, big counter space, big time. How much open space can you have in counter space? Especially if you like to cook, you gotta have counters. You gotta have counter space. That's very important. Well, you guys heard it from the pro. Tony, thank you very much for the work you you've done in my house. Oh, I love it. This I love is really it. one of my best friends. It's crazy to say, but. God really put us in each other's lives for a reason. I would recommend him on any housework you have done. Like I said, unfortunately though, I kind of got it right before he retired. But I will say, money talks. If you want Tony to work, yeah, yeah. pay up. You gotta pay, you gotta pay the old guy. <laughs> he ain't work. My bones ain't gonna hurt for free. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs>